broken down and tired of living life on the merry-go-round and you can't find a fighter if you haven't done so please like and subscribe to Shanice B on YouTube you can also follow me on Instagram at Shanice B and if you haven't done so please check out my baby boy adorable William on Instagram this page is primarily about being a new mother being a young professional and trying to navigate both worlds and trying to figure out if I'm doing the right thing with regards to balancing work life and everything else so yes please like and subscribe and follow me at Shitty Speed on YouTube thank you Hello, thank you all for checking out my YouTube channel. I just wanted to do a quick video on uh, the coronavirus, or some of you may call it COVID-19. And basically that is just a um, upper respiratory illness um, disease that started in China back in like December 2019, and it's made its way to the US and now it's in Virginia. Um, I know a lot of people are either joking about it or they're extremely fearful of it and I just want to say that we cannot let fear guide us into the extreme of situations we cannot let fear overpower us and cause us to do some of the craziest things it could be really dangerous but at the same time there are steps that you should take to be proactive with regards to the illness and health and safety tips um, once again these are tips these are not legit actual plans as to way to prevent it anything like that but more so just tips and things that i saw that i saw on the cdc website also with there have been 395 tests completed um and there's actually 45 cases instead of 41 in virginia so i wanted to name this video flowing with the unknown this video is flowing with the unknown because sometimes we try to control every aspect of our life and i feel like with this particular disease this was like one of the most unexpected things and those who were joking about it and not taking it as serious realized that it was something serious once there was a state of emergency declared um and now everybody's kind of panicked because the children are going to be out for two weeks from school i kind of saw it coming but i also didn't want to seem like one of those extreme people who were jumping to conclusions um and letting her anxiety get in the way so I just kind of took a step back and said, okay, these are questions that come up for me. And what ways can I begin to plan and what things might be coming up for other people? And then how can I also, you know, be a mom, a professional, and a community member? So along with the unknown and not allowing your fears to, you know, cause you to overly stress in this situation. So just some... Healthy precautions, uh, safety tips one should take would be such as washing your hand, covering your coughs and your sneezes. Just, I would say a lot of the basic things that we should have been doing. Um, and just being more mindful of things we're touching. And there's germs everywhere, but um, yeah, just being more mindful of these things. And then also, while being mindful of it, not being extreme. Like I've heard of people drinking bleach and all washing up in bleach all kinds of crazy stuff um and that's not safe and that's what i would consider more so on the extreme side of things now if you decide you want to um not engage in you know large gatherings and isolate yourself a little bit that's totally fine you're doing what you need to do to protect yourself whether it be for your physical health and your mental health so i get it and then also back to my safety tips so a few safety tips i have is to wash your hands to cover your mouth if you're sneezing or coughing and to uh, get rest, drink plenty of water. Uh, do not post pictures of some of the things you might have gathered in the midst of, you know, going out to get a few items that is needed from the store. Because in the event that something serious happens, um, and you posted on Facebook or Instagram that you had all of this stuff and Susan from down the street notices that you posted, that you have like 20 cases of water, if something happened and they didn't get those things or they were running low, the first house they're going to go to is yours. So be careful with sharing all of that. Um, and then also be mindful that some people 
didn't have a chance to actually get to the store. So taking all of those items is not really helpful for your neighbor and that in itself could cause a lot of panic. So just being mindful of the things you are grabbing and being considerate of others. Um, so yeah. Just a few safety tips I want to go over. Wash your hands, cover your mouth when you're coughing and sneezing. You know, wash your hands for a good 20 seconds. And also drink plenty of water. Stay hydrated. Take your vitamins. Just some basic stuff that could help you. Um, yeah. You all can tell there is a lot going on in our society right now that we did not expect or plan for. Um, and a lot of people were joking about the coronavirus and COVID-19 and oh, uh, just, you know, basically joking anyone who was taking it serious like oh they're just being extra oh they're they're just panicking for no reason it's fine this is a big joke but now that the schools are closing for the next two weeks and now that people are being laid off of jobs and businesses are impacted um and just concerned about loved ones and how they're going to make their ends meet and whether or not organizations are going to be affected it's causing a lot of panic so that's why i really wanted to title this video kind of flowing with the unknown understanding that some things are out of our control and then there are some things that are in our control to a certain extent but even then tomorrow's not promised but you can do what you can today to kind of prepare for tomorrow um so just flowing with the unknown um and understanding that you cannot get so caught up in fear fear is a very dangerous thing and it can cause people to engage in really risky behavior and place others in dangerous situations so keeping in mind that we cannot let fear overpower us and yes, some of the things we see on the media can be overwhelming, but I would also encourage you to take a step back from that and not just go on with everything you hear on social media or the media. Um, so do your own research and try not to panic over the unknown, but kind of flow with it. What may come up, like a lot of people didn't know schools were getting ready to close for the next two weeks. It happened. So what are we going to do now? Are we going to sit here and panic or are we going to come up with a plan? So... This video is going to talk about the coronavirus and just some issues that and concerns that come up for me and just also um, ways to things to think about. So with regards to the coronavirus, just talking about different basic tips and healthy and safety tips that one should consider, such as like washing your hands, um, covering your mouth when you sneeze or cough, just basic things that we've been practicing since like kindergarten, but a lot of people don't or haven't been doing so. But washing our hands, covering our mouths, um, cleaning, 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 cleaning. If this wasn't the motivation to clean, <laughs> I don't know what is, but I've literally been bleaching now a lot of items in my home um, just as a way to sanitize the house. But one thing I would say has led some people to extremities is uh, drinking bleach. That is a big no-no. That is not safe. I am not an expert. I am not a doctor. However, washing up with bleach drinking bleach that is a no-go um so yeah for me it's just sanitizing cleaning washing my hands um making sure i'm building up my immune system so i actually was able to purchase the uh, elderberry syrup from the alkaline family which is local you can uh, go to their link in my description below and they sell the elderberry syrup it was like it wasn't that much you can go check out their and you can't find a fighter But I see it in you So we gon' walk it out Move mountains We gon' walk it out And move mountains um, And I feel like that has helped me Because I am often sick And I feel like my immune system is always really low But that's just one way I'm taking steps to increase my uh, immune system so it can function properly. And then also little William has these little elderberries and we're all taking vitamins in this house and also trying to um, basically not engage in a lot of large crowds. We avoid going to a grocery store at a certain time. We, when we do go, we're wiping down everything and then also not having a lot of gatherings at our house. So just making sure we are taking proactive steps, but also not trying to allow fear to consume us and fear of the unknown to consume us. So I was supposed to have William's second birthday party, but I had to cancel it. 
One of the most important things you can do during this time is practice social distancing, meaning this is not a time to have people coming over your house. No group gatherings, sleepovers should be canceled. And if you are um, coming down with some of the symptoms, probably it's going to be best to separate yourself in a separate room from family members. Um, and then also, if you are caring for family members, just be aware of your own health and Locate a list of healthcare services and what's going to be near you and within like walking distance. And then also create an emergency plan for your family and friends. One thing to plan for is, you know, your job. So if you are working, um, you're a mother, you understand, and you're another you're a community member, right? So you can't just say, all right. I'm out of here, forget paying my bills, forget showing up to work, uh, forget anybody else who might need something, I'm out. If I had the means to do so, I probably would disappear for a little bit, but I don't. Um, and then also, a colleague of mine actually reminded me that in the midst of times as such, when there's a lot of unknown and you know people are having to lean in those support systems, not everyone has a support system, not everyone has the ability to continue to work because they don't have anyone to watch their children so it's also taking into consideration how can I be of service to others while also being a mother and not placing myself my children or anyone else in danger and then also showing up for the community who might need me there's a group on um, Facebook that I follow it's like Seville mom group they're actually doing a great job I've saw seen a lot of great um, communication and ideas and coming together um, this is a post in the Civil Mom Group. This is a mother basically offering her services to those who um, are teaching classes and they feel overwhelmed. She's utilizing her personal experience in technology to assist others. And she said, although she's unable to provide that child care due to having her own child um, with some different abilities, that she wanted to extend the service out to be of service to others in a way that's gonna help the teachers facilitate their job. For the CDC's All of Community approach focuses on slowing the transmission of COVID-19 and reducing illness and death while minimizing social and economic impacts. So that means supporting your local businesses. Another cool thing I saw on the Civil Mom group is that Another thing someone posted on the Seville Moms group is that if you were concerned about your child being able to eat food and you were ashamed by it, please okay. feel free to PM her directly and she will do her best to get cereal, gallon of milk, bread, peanut butter and jelly. Um, I feel like the school systems are doing a good job at trying to come up with a way to provide food for children who might not have it um, because schools are closed for the next two weeks. So. Things as such have kind of uplifted me in a way and showed me that our world is not as bad as I think it is sometimes. Also a shout out to the PBNJ Fund and the PTO Club that came together to facilitate a way to get lunch to children. Um, I think this is amazing. You must be 18 years of age or up to 18 years of age to receive the lunch, but they're making a way, they're volunteering, they're putting themselves at risk to be of service to the community. And this is beautiful. Although I'm not out there directly, I do find encouragement by this. The Charlottesville Area Community Fund has set up uh, ways for people to donate and support those who may be in need. So, like I said, when it comes to coming up with, you know, tips versus safety plans, a safety, like a plan for your family or a plan in general, is just kind of a way to be proactive and look ahead. So in the event that I'm, uh, my job shuts down what am I going to do and this is kind of already starting to happen with my other part-time job but thankfully I have another job some of you may or may not be aware that I do teach Zumba and I teach a few dance fitness classes locally um, but I'm thinking of ways to teach these class by utilizing um, social media and going live maybe or maybe posting a few uh, videos to my YouTube page not sure if I want to do that just yet however um, I'll keep you all posted with regards to that. But this is just another way that I'm trying to think of how can I continue to do my job without physically being in the class in front of you. I'm thinking of just, you know, utilizing technology to assist with that though. Thankfully, my full-time job is still up and running. However, I do work for a nonprofit. So looking forward to see what the plan is going to be moving forward with all the scares and concerns. And just trying to figure out what I can do to really show up and be fully present at my job while I'm there, while also not neglecting my home life and myself in general. So a lot of questions are coming up for me. I 
I've started asking questions and I know I can come off kind of panicky and worried all the time, but I'd rather ask those difficult questions, those questions others may have, than to just sit back and say, I don't have the question because I'm sure someone else has the question. I'm sure it might come up in the future, but I'm not gonna wait until they're telling us, oh, it's time to go. We're shutting everything down to come up with these questions. So, ways, so for planning, consider unique ways that you are able to work from home. If you are working from home, what can you do in your space that you're working in to make sure you're working effectively? If you know you cannot have a TV in the room that you're working in, move the TV somewhere else for the moment because what you wanna do is continue to follow through on the work. Um, another step. Tips for working moms, just making sure you always find balance. Yeah, you have to do that daily, but in the midst of chaos and concern, try to find balance, try to find, you know, make some adjustments because when there's chaos added, additional chaos, you just have to find balance and do what's right. And you might be tired one day and just need to go lay down versus trying to go volunteer to help somebody else out. Just take care of you. Um, and then also ask those tough questions like, if I do take sick time for these next two weeks, um, am I gonna be compensated for that? Or if I don't even have enough sick time, because you have a toddler and they're sick throughout the year um, and you've used your time, are you going to be able to tap into your paid annual leave time? And if you don't have paid annual leave time, is there some sort of something that the job can help or the company can help with to help you cover that cost? Um, these are real questions. These are everyday things that are coming up for people. And like I said, it's better, it's safe to ask than not to, and it's safe to still ask even if you get a no, um, because you just, you never know. Pull your director to the side, you just never know. Um, and I'm not saying take advantage of these things, and I don't think people really would in this situation, um, because for all of that, you just walk away. And if you're able to bring your child to work, just consider the pros and the cons of, is it really worth your health and safety of your child, and are you gonna be productive at work? And like, for instance, little William, he was a little baby, I would be able to take him to work for certain situations, but also now that he's older, I would really, I, I am kind of worried because he is not the kind of kid that would just sit and he's gonna want to be up under me and he likes to throw stuff and fall out and he's in his two, so. But I think also if I was just to bring his tablet, that might help or my phone, he'll watch YouTube. Um, your job or what to do if you are expected to still show up to your job and you don't have childcare, uh, and you know schools are out what do you do or you're really concerned about your physical health and mental health because of everything that's going on so i think in those moments it's extremely important to ask the difficult questions ask are there telework options ask can i bring my child to work um the thing is to say yes or no so it's better to know and have asked than to not ask at all um and then also reach out to family members to see if they're able to lend a hand in the situation Yes, of course, you want to be mindful not to place them in danger, right? But you also want to be thinking about that as well when you go into your job. Um, just keeping all of that in mind um, and understanding, like, yes, everybody has bills to pay. I get it. Um, but also keeping in mind, like, at the end of the day, is it really worth your help? But when you're planning, you are asking those tough questions. You are, you know just trying to figure out a plan that's gonna not just work for yourself, but everyone else involved. And honestly, it's not just when I say everyone else involved, not just in your household, but the community as a whole. And I feel like this community has done a great job of showing up and coming together. And although I might not be directly involved in that, I got a sense of encouragement and uplifting just seeing how people can really step in and lend a hand because my approach to the situation with everything that was going on, I was gonna say, okay, I will be nowhere to be found. Do not come to my house. I can't help you. Um, but I see that people are volunteering to go drop food off to children that aren't in school for the next two weeks at a certain time on a certain day. That I'm like, oh wow, they have the ability to really show up despite their fears, despite the unknown of this virus, um, this COVID-19 thing. Like, the fact that people are still able to be good people in the midst of this gives me hope. And we have to continue to remember that we're all human, right? and we all deserve to be treated fairly. So you shouldn't be making jokes, racial jokes about this um, because it's affecting everyone. And we're all human, right? And everybody deserves food, water, shelter, 
healthcare. Everybody deserves to be treated fairly. So keeping in mind that some things are in our control and some things are not in our control. And people are dying every day from other things, whether it be that they're giving birth, people are dying, whether it be cancer, whether it be heart attacks, people are dying every day, car accidents, the list goes on. So if we allow fear to consume us, we will be stuck um, in, in a big panic and it'll be a big mess. And that's what we don't want to happen. And like I said, do your own research. So I think it's really important for everyone to lean in on your faith in this time and to have faith, not fear. The shirt that you see right here in the picture, I was able to purchase from www.shopblackplush.com. You can locate them on Instagram or Facebook. Um, have faith and do not let your fear drive you into a dark place.